On the last episode of a Mark V drip build, you saw us swap the rear end, the gas tank, and cut a hole in the floor of this Mark V. And then today we're gonna swap our transmission for a all wheel drive one. Take this diff apart, weld it, and uh, put it in the car. This is a Haldex unit, or a differential and Haldex unit. We are gonna be disassembling this to weld it together. Cause welding a diff makes it more drifty. We're gonna drain this this bad boy. First, we're gonna start. I wouldn't hit those with the impact. Why? Cause it's rusty and sh It's gonna, fine, do it. I, I like to live on the edge. Do it. I'll see the head. I mean, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. All right. But that's exactly what I didn't want to. I didn't think it was gonna break loose anyway. Now. Yeah, it's a circle now. That's why I didn't <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> so what you're saying is Paul was impatient and because of that, we now have more work to do. That's how it's done. But now we don't have another bolt to put back in it. I mean, these things shouldn't go back in anyway. These things are f***ing terrible. This oil really does look great though. The rest of the differential doesn't, but that's good that the oil does. It's what's on the inside that counts. It is what's on the inside that counts. You gonna hit it with an impact? Hitting uh, anybody creates an impact. Nice and black. See, Ooh. that's what dark oil looks like. Because this came from a Passat, it's pretty likely that this Haldex was almost never serviced. I don't know. Why don't you use the closed end? I, because I don't think it's gonna fit. I was right. It's not that big of a deal. We have to replace it. There we go. So is this what you replace when you wanna do some modding? Uh, when you wanna do some skirt skirt. Skeet skeet, skirt skirt. Hey, hey, chill. Yeah, I don't need to get hit in the face with a <laughs> Is this dirty? It's cleanish. I wiped it off. Oh, oh it that's is. the wrong one. That's <laughs> the wrong one. Dirty, it's it, dirtier now. You made it dirtier than it was. <laughs> connect Electrical here. connectors can be, a, there it is. They, it can be a pain in the ass when you're dealing with dirty electrical Seized. connectors. You just walk it up. Keep walking it up. It doesn't feel like it's on a dowel. It's, it's for sure, there's a dowel right here. It feels like it's this axle flange because this is all the way up. Okay. Yeah, well, there's now there's a puddle of fluid on the floor. So we're going to make a special tool to uh, remove these axle flanges. 20 minutes later. There is a special tool that Volkswagen makes for this, but it essentially is going to be the same thing that we're making. It's just a plate with holes in it. Well, it's not that precise. He's just kind of eyeing it up and then drilling holes. <laughs> Only two weeks left. Exclusively at shopdap.com? No, you, know, you cannot buy this. <laughs> Exclusively only to us. They, most people who are capable of doing what we're about to do would just do what we're doing. <laughs> they would just take a piece of metal, <laughs> drill holes in it. Because you're supposed to bolt it up and then just hammer it, ha hit it with a hammer. I see. So it's, we're not talking about rocket, rocket science here. <laughs> My wife was like, oh, I bought, I think it was a peach tree. I was like, no, I'm like, we're not going to have a peach tree in our house. She's like, why? I'm like, what do you think is going to happen to all the peaches? They're going to rot and they're going to fall on the ground. My dogs are going to eat rotten peaches. We're going to have <laughs> other animals and coming in our yard. And oh, by the way, rotten peaches all over our goddamn yard. Unless you pick the peaches and eat them. Bro, you can't possibly like you don't get enough good fruit off of trees to, to use it all. I'm glad you guys are having a good conversation while this tool is working. <laughs> while it's working? Yeah. Max is currently in a place that he he's not gonna want to be Why when I hit it? when I start swinging. You want to hit it? <laughs> yes. All right. You can pull that giant. I don't know if you saw that. I did not see that. <laughs> no. This is gonna be working. Oh, it does. Hey, look at that. We fashioned a tool. Now we can take the differential out. Oh that, oh, that side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. There you go. That's how differential works. So, you see the middle part, can yes. You see this gear? These are called the spider gears in the and side. And this gear on this side, they spin separately. So, you're going to weld all of these together so that they turn as one. So, your wheels can turn at a different speed because when you make a U turn, the outside wheel is moving at a different speed than your inside wheel. 
And so what's going to happen with this car when you make a U-turn like that, it's going to go skr, 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 skr. <laughs> So while you guys are talking about your stupid peach trees, you can, I can now show you how this actually worked while this is like this. This is visually stunning. When you tighten this, <laughs> all right, well, you can explain it then, Dingberry. So when you tighten these, this is why they say to go back and forth. Because it locks it, it up. Because it actually pulls up the differential for, uh, flange first. There we go. We should be able to pop this guy out completely. And just pull that guy out all the way too. Whoop. Here's your differential. How easy is it to install a limited slip? Do you just throw the new one in there? And so the here's the reason, like I said earlier, we'll say why you can't. It's because this ring guy? gear is actually welded to the stiff. So there's not really a uh, way to replace them. Normally, you usually you swap them over from your old differential to your new one. This is what drives it. Because it's welded on this one, it's not something that you can take off. Do you <laughs> wanna take apart this thing? Yeah, let's do it. We've now completed taking the differential out, which is what we needed to do to actually accomplish getting it welded. But we wanted to see more of the inner workings of the Halifax to show people on screen what you could see, uh, which is what we're about to take apart. And because we were kind of curious to see it ourselves. Oh, gross. <laughs> so impact drivers, they turn while they, while they hit it and they can prevent things like this from getting damaged. I don't think, is that working? It didn't do Oh, that that's just stripped. Is it stripped? Yeah. Oh, neat. <laughs> okay. Well, next plan. What about a ratchet? Try hitting it with a ratchet now. Okay. Because it's probably a thread lock bolt. This is not uh, often disassembled. Ooh, that's awfully goopy. But that's not a normal bolt. It's a control valve. It's probably not something we need to disassemble. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's right about that. But hey, we want to see how all this works, right? So. Yep. Hey, I don't know hammer. if you know this, but this is heavy, so if you'd like to get the f out of my way. <laughs> I do know, because you wanted me to dis I we need the hammer. Look at that guy. Yes. This please. is where your drive shaft attaches to. And you see it spins this cylinder on the back here. This is the, uh, the clutch pack. Inside here, you can see in these holes, there's a series of clutches that can connect to this, and that connects to this shaft in here when the clutches are engaged. That turns this pinion gear, and that is what turns the differential, which turns those, <laughs> which turns the axles, which turns the wheels. You just cut to a shot of. Which makes you go. <laughs> cut to a shot of how how that works. We explained it about in about three seconds as opposed to. <laughs> it appears to be broken. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. well, that's that. That's neat. So we're gonna get this diff welded up and before that, let's take a look inside. So they've cut custom plates here for this to weld in place. Some people might actually weld a diff to try to weld these spider gears together for strength to properly hold up. You do wanna put plates like this in there. Uh, otherwise the welds could break and then you really have a lot of trouble with metal pieces jumping around inside there. All right, now that we got that taken care of, the diff welded, we're gonna go bring this over to the shop and get the diff put in and the transmission spot. But this car doesn't move, so we're gonna tow it with our tow rag and bring it over there. All right, we're in. I think our folding mirror on the other side is broken. There you go. <laughs> oh, come on. There you go. Because we have the rear brakes off this car and we have to push it around our parking lot, we're gonna start by bleeding the rear brakes so that we are not in desperately danger zone of <laughs> running into the back of a tow vehicle <laughs> while trying to tow it. When you're bleeding brakes, you start with the furthest one. So Max is starting off on the passenger rear, furthest from the master cylinder. This oh, yeah. is for sure the most boring thing we've done. Pushing the car over here was more interesting than this. <laughs> this is why you need to change your brake flow. This is supposed to be like a nice clear gold color. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty gross. 
Well, we're not going to show you much of this. If you need a DIY on brake servicing, we have a DIY that shows you using this tool. So we'll link to the description. Now we have two diffs, as you can see here. Here's an assembled one that is going to be eventually for all wheel drive. And then this one is the one we're going to use for our rear wheel drive setup with our welded diff. So I'm going to reassemble this. We have some new seals and stuff for this. And uh, right now I'm going to hammer these old seals out so we can reinstall the new ones. Before we install the rest of this stuff, we're gonna clean up this mating surface. And you probably have to scrape it and use some emery cloth, but I'm gonna <laughs> zing it up. This is the weirdest colored Nutella I've ever seen. Hopefully we haven't forgotten anything. Hey, you gonna look up the torch specs for these? Yep, Oga Doga. <laughs> I already looked it up. It's, it, it, it said Oga Doga at least three of them. These probably don't have torque spec because they're not intended to be taken apart. Right now we're installing the all wheel drive version that's non welded into this car currently. And the reason why is because a welded diff trying to push it around because it makes the wheels bind, uh, is gonna suck to push around <laughs> and just deal with in general. So we will swap diffs at a later date before we're finished with this thing. So this, I had to undo the upper control arm here so we can swing this in, because this doesn't fit. But now that the control arm's out, we can kind of pull it out and get it in. Now our axle's in, wow. 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 So now we're gonna install these 034 subframe bushings in the subframe that we're actually using. Since we installed them in the aluminum one and decided that wasn't gonna work for reasons. What? We always torque every bolt that we touch. Just off camera, you guys aren't interested in that, so. Subframe bushings. Complete. Installed. Thanks, so 34. All right, before we can go ahead and put our transmission in, we need to take this sway bar from the R32. It's got a little bit of a downward dip here to clear the transfer case. Uh, so we'll need to swap this with the one that's in the GTI. The uh, headlight leveling sensor is in the way, so we're gonna go ahead and take care of that real quick. Here it is. Got it. Oh my god. Hey, there you go, man. Front sway bar. All right, now we got our engine brace on and we are hooking this thing up. Since we're gonna take the transmission mount off, this is gonna keep the engine from falling out. We haven't talked about it in detail yet, but the transmission we're using for this build is a Mark I Audi TT 225 all wheel drive transmission. The reason we can't use something from like the R32 is they came with the VR6 and VWs use the same bolt pattern for their transmissions on all, all their four cylinder engines, but these six cylinder engines actually use a different bolt pattern. So we couldn't go with something from the R32. We could use a Golf R transmission or Mark 6 or Mark 7, and that would be an option for a manual swap as well on this. Is the new trans using the same engine mount? Good call. I don't know. Huh? I actually don't know. We're, you know what, Nathan? It's a good question that we'll find the answer to. There's a, there's a bunch of questions we have uh, to answer when we get the trans or attempt to put the trans in. Most notably, will the transmission drive shaft uh, portion that goes to the rear all-wheel drive module uh, clear the turbo? So we might not even be getting this trans significantly in. We may have to take the turbo off to actually put it in. His car has is pretty modified, so a lot of the factory stuff you got to take off, like all this battery tray and all this other airbox and all the other stuff that's in here, we don't have to mess with. So, you know, it's like a handful of bolts and some brackets, and plus the shifter cables we took off because we bent the shifter cable that we had to replace. You know, so this part of the transmission is for the all-wheel drive module, which goes back to the drive shaft back here, and this is goes to the axle on the passenger side. So his turbo hangs down pretty low because this doesn't exist on that car. So it's possible that this could interfere with the turbo mounting, in which case uh, he needs to get a new exhaust manifold. See if we uh, did it correctly. Go ahead and lower it down. Oh, holy hell! You can go a little bit slower. I did not <laughs> intend on going that fast. We're hung up on something. I see that. 
should be good. Yeah, it's good. Hold on. It's way, it's under the sway bar. Here. There we go. There we go. Now it's good. Go ahead. All the way down. All right. So what I'm about to do is draw a hole all the holes of all the screws that we take out of this transmission and then you run them through to make sure that every screw goes back in the appropriate place so pretty easy i've only taken one front wheel drive trans out and it was this one <laughs> like eight years ago <laughs> <laughs> that's in multiple pieces yes i see that that's, <laughs> that's supposed to be one piece there you go oh you almost had it okay i got the pry bar in there the so the problem is that bracket that we should have taken off the mount bracket yeah usually you don't have to take that off yeah well it, it, you don't have to but it's been hitting the frame rail so since we forgot to take a bracket off top of the transmission this is why we're dealing with this circumstance so now we're going to remove it and hopefully the trans won't fall on us we are now dealing with this circumstance where we're trying to prevent the transmission from falling out but it removed that bracket after the fact you're going faster than the car i'm trying to go slow to keep it i'm, hold, I'm using my hands gentle all right. Well, my my problem is once we unbolt this thing, there's feel like that. It's about to. It's gonna fall out. Yeah. Once we get it on there, we can keep lift going. It. Keep going down. We can lift the car off. What's <laughs> What's your interpretation of the current plan? I don't know. Poor planning. Poor planning. Poor planning is correct. This is what happens. You know, work on cars all the time. I I was intending on thinking I was gonna need to take that out, but I wasn't sure, so I left it. Now, the regret has set in. There he goes. Do this. Yep, now she's out. Not hanging on anything, right? Not that I see. Okay. Hey! Hey! We just polish it up. Looks like it's already clean because this car hasn't been driven in eight years. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, transmission that we got from Wolf had a kind of a old crusty throughout bearing and transmission we took out of this car had a nice new one. So we're going to swap it over in here because it's inside the transmission it's really something you don't want to have to replace later here's our all-wheel drive transmission we're going in with this it could hit our turbo right here we're unsure and that is something we're about to find out i'm getting a sweet quad workout a little bit of glutes too you know, really get it right in this area right here okay go up there we go, it's closer. <laughs> how, how, how's it looking now? Not good. Now that it's pretty close. Not great. To make this all, like, to work all wheel drive, it's probably gonna need a turbo blanket and a heat shield on the... Uh, yeah, it's gonna, you're gonna destroy inner axle boots. Or it may even need like a racing axle boot too, like a real high heat. The axle cup is actually better than I expected. I think it might be okay. Bust through okay. them. There we go. That, now the back, that is, that feels way better and the back needs to kick up. And then go up and then wiggle it like this. And then kind of wiggle it like this, right? side to side. Uh, but it's not doing it. Cause that's right there when you're doing that, it's binding on the block. I think you just got it. Definitely not. Kind of seems like maybe. It does seem like I got it in. It's, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in. All right, so then, okay, yes it is. Your, your face looks, you got marks all over it. I like to thank the little seven pound, eight ounce baby Jesus. It was a man, he had a beard. Look, I like the baby version the best, do you hear me? This is actually, it will be okay. You had some serious problems with your- with It's gonna heat, heat up the transfer case. Yeah. It's gonna warm that an axle up just a touch. That's you're, really convenient how that just kind of worked out. Your was that? That we don't have to custom make a lot, a bunch more stuff. Yeah. Well, let's uh, get the bolts in. Yeah. Uh, we're 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 not we're not out of the woods yet. My left shoulder blade is it's all tired out, tuckered out. So uh, most of these all-wheel drive transes are a little bit of a pain in the ass because that uh, transfer case portion that hangs over the back of the block. Plus, we don't do transes every day. Uh, or ever so <laughs> you know that too so we're done though so this is moving forward it does look like the transmission does clear the turbo although there's going to be some uh boost pipes that are probably going to need to be modified and uh, reclock the turbo but and some heat shielding to make sure it doesn't torch the uh overheat the transmission fluid and then also 
maybe something around the inner CV joint might need to be protected so that the heat doesn't burn that thing up. Once all the transmission stuff was worked out and we knew it would work, we need to get stub axles for the car. We'll explain what that is in a little bit. We are gonna get some axles so we can make some stub axles. So we're taking stub axles from a junkyard that where we're mean. taking axles and we're tr hoping to find something without an engine in it. So we have to do as minimal amount of work. Oh, hey, there's an axle that's cut in half. That'll work. That will work. That'll work perfectly. Where? It, it'll take up less space too. Is it a 12 point or 6 point? It doesn't point? even have a bolt in it. Does it not? Just pull that out. Can you just pull it? <laughs> well, that was hard. Wow, we brought all these tools and that's all we needed to do. All right, now, can we, is the other one like that? Too? I hope so. Right, we, can just assume, we can just assume that this thing needs an engine. Hanging by the heater coils. <laughs> Seems like a lot of work to cut, cut through that axle. solid. <laughs> yeah, but they don't, they don't have triple squares, dude. There's a CC right there, too. How about that? <laughs> Why are there so many CCs? Because they're because they they jump timing. Here we go. All right. Now that now it needs a knife. Yeah, I'm trying to not spl so splatter. I'm trying not splatter you. Mm. Mm. Delicious tripod. <laughs> I'm gonna put it underneath the car once I'm done, not inside the car, so someone doesn't like lean on it and get what they believe might could be Dude, diarrhea were, all over yeah, themselves. <laughs> there was a, a short situation. <laughs> there was a short situation that I had to, had to resolve it. It happens. Listen, sometimes you short. You got to take care of it. It happens in a junkyard. You find yourself a floor mat, you wipe your all right? That's the way it goes. It like a thousand times quicker and easier than I was expecting. You saw us get these from a junkyard. Now we're gonna install them in the car. This is so that we can, we can have no front axles in the vehicle without destroying your wheel bearings because if you put the weight of a car onto uh, a wheel hub and bearing without actually putting something in there, you will destroy it. So uh, we're just sticking these in there, which is pretty easy. Obviously because we're making a drift car with this or starting to, uh, we don't need front axles, which is part of our purpose. All right, so this thing is going to be kind of a pain to put in. Uh, this has the Tyrol Sport dead set kit. As you see, these holes are quite a bit bigger than the bolt that usually goes in there. It goes down in that so that there's no play for the bolt. It's an exact fit. That slop in there is usually what allows you to put it on there pretty easy. Without that, it is uh, definitely a pain. So let's deal with that. The reason why the high slop is intentional from the factory is to allow for proper alignment of the front end. So this locks everything down. Something, especially if you're doing aggressive driving and stuff like that, aggressive braking, aggressive acceleration and cornering, that subframe will start to shift around a little bit. So the purpose of this is to prevent that movement, even though from the factory it was intended to be that way. Because the stock Mark V trans mount wouldn't work with the Mark I TT transmission, we need to do some modification. We had to, no way to support it, so we had to tow it back with an engine brace on it back to our warehouse. So one thing we need to modify that, uh, because we're using the 18T trans out of a Mark I TT, is gonna be our brackets that actually mount the transmission. So this is the original GTI one that bolts to the top of the transmission. As you can see, this is the other one for the trans we put in the car. You can see the size of it, it's not gonna work. The shape's slightly different. Uh, but most importantly, you can see here, this is where the, the motor mount actually bolts to it. So this one goes like this, like so, and that one, not gonna work, has a hump here. So we gotta machine off, uh, have this milled off, and then we're gonna uh, box this in with a plate. The trans that's in this car needs this specific setup. Here's the modified 18T Audi TT transmission bracket and we can then use our Mark V transmission mount to the body of the vehicle. Now we're gonna be installing a lot of these parts from 034 Motorsport, they worked with us on this build. Uh, first thing is gonna be our rear sway bar. We're also going to be installing these rear control arms, these are the uppers. The sway bar is something that gives us a better overall handling of the vehicle, it's a stiffer sway bar than the stock one. The control arms give us adjustability of camber where the factory ones don't have that option. These are gonna be able to have the adjustability here. This red portion allows us to make that adjustment in the vehicle. And to go with that rear sway bar that we got from O34, we've got uh, adjustable rear end links. So these will go on here. And the sway bar is adjustable in multiple positions. These will let you kind of dial it in so you don't have any preload on your sway bar, as well as uh, don't have any rubber bushings or anything in here for deflection. Then we've got the front 
end links to go with our R32 bar that we already installed. Those are also adjustable to give you any sort of clearance uh, and get make sure you don't have any preload on that bar. Let's get these on the car. All right, so we're pumping this up. We're installing our uh, welded diff. We didn't originally install this in the car because we thought we were gonna have to push this thing around a bunch and doing so with a welded diff is a pain. So uh, to save ourselves some trouble, we swapped it out and now we just gotta throw this back in. Fortunately, there's only three bolts and we have this beautiful access port above us that allows for easy installation. There it is. Ow, my finger. <laughs> Dude, I'm way off. I see that. Are you are you hitting it? Again? This is this is not gonna work. Oh boy. <laughs> this dip is not gonna work. Whoever told you that it's the same lied. So what happened was, we decided or we tried to use the rear diff from the Passat, which was gonna go along with that aluminum subframe that we didn't end up using. And it turns out the Passat diffs are quite a bit bigger than the R32 diffs and they have different bolt spacing for their mounts. Didn't work with our subframe. So we've got now this gigantic paperweight of a welded diff that we're not gonna use. And uh, we still have a, a unwelded diff, an open differential that needs to be welded. So all that work was for nothing, uh, which is a fairly common theme in this build so far. And yeah. Well, we we now have an open diff. <laughs> so. We could swap the diff itself. If they're the same. 13 and a half. Give me, <laughs> give me where, give me where I need it to be. 15. 15. <laughs> 15 and, and a quarter. Okay. So one of these things is not like the other. Now the question is, can we take this apart and put the weld to diff? We're not doing that right now. Are they the same diff and can we just swap? Them? I'm gonna go on a limb and say no. Maybe. Sad welded diff noises. Well, isn't that fun? This is just one learning experience after another. It's also much larger. It is larger, isn't it? Yeah. I guarantee that diff is not gonna work because it's, it's the physical size of the housings are different. They look like it, yeah. This one's gotta get welded when we go to Cody's too then. <laughs> this goes up in here and replaces that arm. And it gives you camber adjustments? Well, you have camber adjustment from the factory. From the factory, this bolt is on an eccentric, so when you turn it, it pulls the arm in and out like this. It was really hard to get to, especially with the all-wheel drive car. And then with this, you can unbolt this bolt and turn this uh, end in and out, and that'll pull your camber in and out. Feel the seat. <laughs> Are you even a technician? No, I'm not a technician. I'm a used to be technician. I, I have now almost owned the shop as long as I was a tech. <laughs> Dropping everything. <laughs> I just know things, okay, guys? I know things and I teach people things. That's what I do. And sometimes I learn things, then teach them to people. Like the thought Haldexes don't fit in Mark V. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. According to Max's research, which was clearly shitty research, <laughs> that was true. Two out of five wheel bolts being tight is pretty substandard. It's fine. Who are you to judge? I am someone to judge. Why? I've dropped everything. <laughs> everything I've touched. You I've literally dropped. have dropped everything you've touched today. <laughs> oh, I felt the We're done. Sweat. We're not done. We have the wrong diff. <laughs> well, done for today. We're done for now. On tomorrow's episode, follow along while we install the differential, fabricated downpipe. Drive shaft. Drive shaft. We also welded a differential, which we were going to include in that episode, but it turns out that differential doesn't need to be welded, so uh, that probably won't be included. You'll probably just have seen some B-roll of it while we were talking about <laughs> it, but it's actually not going to get finished because that's a scrap differential. I don't know how useful that clip is going to how, be. Why, why is that differential not the right differential, Max? Because it's from a Passat. Yeah. And I don't know if you noticed, this isn't a Passat. Why don't you do the research? Bad research. <laughs> There's not really a way to research that. <laughs> <laughs>